Okay, we're looking at page 292, question number two, where you had to evaluate negative tan of negative 5 pi over 12. And so to deal with the two negatives that you have there, we'll first rely on the fact that tan of minus any angle is the same as negative tan of the angle. That means that this negative would remain out front, and tan of negative 5 pi over 12 could be written as negative tangent of 5 pi over 12. So you can make the angle positive by removing a negative sign. Now, these two negatives, of course, multiply to make a positive, meaning that we can ignore those negatives. Now we're stuck with tan of 5 pi over 12, which we cannot evaluate simply by looking at our special triangles, because 5 pi over 12 is not one of the angles that we see over here but we could maybe use those angles in a relation of two angles being added up to give uh, one of the, uh, two angles from the special triangles that could add up to give 5 pi over 12. The easiest way to see that would be to change each of the angles, uh, the denominators, into something over 12. Pi over 6 is, of course, 2 pi over 12. Pi over 3 would be 4 pi over 12 and pi over 4 is 3 over 12. Quite obviously, if we took 2 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12 and added them up, we would make 5 pi over 12. So I will rewrite my tangent 5 pi over 12 as the tangent of pi over 6 and pi over 4 added up. That being said, I can now rely on my relation that says that tangent of two angles that are, excuse me, being added up is the tan of the first plus the tan of the second divided by one minus the tan of the first times the tan of the second. So my first angle is A, my second angle is B, and so I'm going to change this now to tan of pi over 6 plus tan of pi over 4 divide by 1 minus tan of pi over 6 times the tangent of pi over 4. Now I'm going to need my special triangles to evaluate each of those. So I'll kind of bring them down to take a look at those. Tangent of pi over 6 is opposite over adjacent. So we have 1 over root 3. And tan of pi over 4 is, of course, opposite over adjacent 1 over 1. So now we have a 1 over root 3 plus 1 over 1 divide by 1 minus 1 over root 3 times 1 over 1. To continue and work this out, I'm going to need a bit more room first. I'm going to rationalize the denominator of each of these radical expressions. So it will become root 3 over 3 plus, I'll change 1, recognizing I'm going to need a common denominator, I will make it 3 over 3. In the bottom, I will have 1 minus root 3 over 3 times 1, which would be useless to write. We'll take the first 1 that we're subtracting, and we'll change that into a fraction instead. And that fraction will be 3 over 3. Now that we have a common denominator, we will write the top as root 3 plus 3 all over 3. The denominator is 3 subtract root 3 all over 3. Those would obviously factor out. And now we're left with an expression of root 3 plus 3 over 3 minus root 3, which looks rather pretty, I guess. And the back of your textbook leaves an answer that looks like that, but we shouldn't because we know it's improper to leave a radical in the denominator. So we like to multiply by 3 plus root 3 on top and bottom, which would be the conjugate. And in so doing, that will eliminate the denominator having a radical. I'm foiling this out with our binomial expansion theorem, 
we would have 3 root 3 and 9 and another 3 root 3 and a 3 when you do first outside inside last. In the denominator we would have 9 minus 3 root 3 plus 3 root 3 and subtract 3. No surprise, the radicals go away. That was the point of this step. So we end up with 9 plus 3 makes 12, plus root 3 root 3 and 3 root 3 make 6 root 3. And we would divide that by 9 take away 3, which would be 6. I see a common factor of 2, leaving 2 plus root 3 over 1. And why would we write that? So we have 2 plus root 3. That should be the answer to the negative 10 of negative 5 pi over 12.